Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry for the late video here. I just do want to cover Salesforce's earnings though. Um, and this stock has plunged over 16% on their first revenue miss since 2006, as you can see here. Um, and I think this is honestly a market overreaction is my first reaction to this, but we're going to be going over it a little bit more in depth and covering Salesforce earnings. This should be a little bit of a longer video um, because there's also an interview with the CEO that I just want to watch a little bit of and just cover the stock in general. This is one that I actually bought about a month ago and then I actually sold all my shares. I don't think I updated you guys on that, but I sold all my shares. I, I didn't buy too much and ultimately it was because I didn't understand the business that well. Um, and now as I've looked more into it, I'm starting to understand it more and more. And after the earnings, it may seem like a good entry point, which I'm still going to evaluate as I do have some cash on hand. Um, and we're going to be covering the stock, their earnings, why it's down 60%, what I think of the uh, earnings report and all those other things. So before we get into it, let's roll the intro. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man and I choose rich every time. I make investing content and my channel is Dividend Dude. You should leave a like and subscribe if you're going to enjoy the video. Hey, disclaimer, this is not financial advice. I am just a dividend growth investor trying to share my takes on dividend growth stocks and various other stocks. This is not financial or investment advice and always do your own due diligence before investing. As you can see, we have the CNBC article of their shares plunging 16%. Um, their quarterly forecast fell short of expectations and revenue still grew 11% from a year earlier, which actually missed Wall Street's expectations. We can see that um, how the company did in the quarter. They reported $2.44 of earnings versus $2.38 expected and $9.13 billion versus $9.17 billion expected. So a slight miss on the revenue and a good beat on the earnings. So it doesn't seem like the stock should be trading down this much off a slight revenue miss and they still beat on earnings. But what happened was they lowered guidance very, very slightly. Um, and that's ultimately my understanding of why these stock traded down. We could see they're talking about some more financial metrics here. But, you know, it's, it's a short report, a short article right here uh, from CNBC on this because it, it's really the slight guidance revision downwards and, and, and the slight revenue miss here is ultimately my understanding of why the stock traded down. I do want to go to this interview with Mark Benioff, the CEO right here, um, and see what he has to say about the quarter. So we're going to go do that right now. Okay, here we have the interview. We're going to just watch a short segment of it. It's about 12 minutes in total length. We're just going to watch the short segment where Mark Benioff gives his first thoughts on the earnings and it's just thoughts on the overall company uh, to get a little bit more perspective here of the earnings report. Obviously, you have what you could say about Jim Cramer. I personally don't like him all that much, but he does do these interviews with the CEOs, which I think are obviously insightful. The management is so key to how a company does, and the CEO is the head of that ship. CEO of Salesforce, take a look. Mark, welcome back to Man Money. Great to see you, Jim. Thanks so much for having me, and hello from San Francisco. Well, hello, and thank you for coming on. Uh, look, I'm not going to dance around it. You're, you're, the stock is down the most. I've seen your stock down in a long time. But the cash flow numbers seem strong. I'm looking at the operating cash flow. I'm also looking at the Salesforce margin. They both seem within, within guidance. So I'm trying to I, I need to rationalize why this is happening. Why have people decided that your business is definitively slowing right now, slowing and that things are not as good as they seem? Look, Jim, you can't always control the buying environment, but what you can control is your cash flow and your margin. And you can see the incredible growth this quarter is amazing. I mean, these are cash flow numbers that we've just never seen before, up 39% year over year to $6.247 billion in cash flow, incredible. And you can see the margin is up 450 basis points to 32.1%. You know, this is a huge transformation that we've gone through over the last year. And this has been an incredible moment for our company. I mean, these are cash flow numbers that are even larger than Coca-Cola. Well, if that's the case, then revenue guidance of 920 to 925, it is indeed below the 9.34 uh, guidance. Why is it below, given the fact what you just said? Jim, we're holding our guidance for the year at $38 billion, which has been incredible for us. And what we see happening is not only this amazing transformation in our core financials, 
but also the amazing AI transformation that we're going through as well. And you'll see some incredible new customer stories that are emerging with companies who are transforming themselves using our amazing new AI, including FedEx, Air India, and even Paychex. And I'd love to talk to you about that as well. Well, let me just, before we get to that, I want to deal with this idea that things have gotten more competitive and the, maybe a sales elongated. Is there something that I am missing which explains why people are taking your stock down 17, 18 percent when it to me looks like this is a rather just typical good Salesforce quarter? Jim, this has been an amazing year for us. We've completely transformed the financials of the company and you can see that we're you know, delivering, as I said, this incredible cash flow and margin number. So, look, I can't predict what the stock market does. You know that. Right. We've been through this how many times over a couple, I guess I, I've been doing this 25 years. But what I can tell you is that the most important thing remains the customer success, which is why how are we going to make these customers totally transform themselves, more profitable, better customer success using our incredible new AI technology. And that's what I'm really excited. Okay, so let's you know, talk you about what you're doing with FedEx. Let's let's put it out there. About okay, so I think that's uh, enough. Overall, he talked about obviously not knowing how the market's going to react and overall uh, still confident in the business, which I, I think is a good way to present uh, the situation here. You know, 17% down off a slight revenue miss and, and slight lower guidance is, is not something that I think should justify a 17% downturn. I think maybe, I think honestly it should trade flat off these earnings. I didn't see too many uh, big problems. And it seems the CEO is the same way here. So let's go on Seeking Alpha and analyze the financials a little bit more deeply after getting the CEO's thoughts and various things of that nature. So we have Salesforce here on Seeking Alpha. You could uh, go on the link in the description and actually get a deal on this platform right here. But you could see down $43 or over 16% after hours right here as of uh, the time I'm recording this video. And the stock is going to be at 228 post market. So about market open just under $230 a share. Now, this company has recently just started to pay a dividend and has also just started buying back shares. So it's becoming a company more up my alley as a dividend growth investor that I do classify myself as. I do like companies that buy back shares and grow that dividend. And Salesforce is just starting to do that now. A lot of people, I think the sell-off is largely because the market thinks their growth is slowing down, which off a slight revenue revision guidance downward, I would not make that assumption. I still think the company's great and and positioned well in the software or SaaS service, software as a service business. And they've helped, like he said, he talked about uh, different main clients like FedEx, like Paychex, um, and various clients like that and how they were happy and he's still gaining market share and we could see this reflected in the company's financials quarter by quarter we could see their total revenues have grown extremely consistently from 2021 all the way till now 2024 and we could see on an annual basis the revenue growth looks even better so the the revenues are consistently growing i also want to take a look at the company's earnings per share which we could see their earnings per share uh right here it's actually a little bit lumpy uh, right here, but we can see their earnings per shares overall on a good trend. I do want to go to their balance sheet because I want to show how good of a balance sheet this company has. This company has very little long-term debt for how big the company is, just under $10 billion. And if we actually look at how much cash this company has, it has over $10 billion. So uh, the company's balance sheet is very strong, which is something that I did want to show. In terms of the cash flow statement, like I said, a free cash flow per share being one of the biggest things that I like to look for. We could see their free cash flow per share right here is hitting all time highs. Like I said, uh, uh, the buying back of shares with the increasing free cash flow and them honestly taking a more tightened approach to uh, trying to run a leaner, more efficient business is what's contributing to this. And they're hitting all time highs in free cash flow per share. I mean, that difference in, in January 2023 to January 2024 is a huge difference and in increasing the intrinsic value of the company extremely quickly. Another thing that I want to highlight is the stock-based compensation. This is something that people had a lot of worries about. The stock-based compensation, which I just saw. I don't know where it went. Okay, right here. Yeah, stock-based compensation. We could see that it actually ticked downward significantly to under 2022 levels despite the growing business. So I think the management is actually hitting on things uh, that we would like to see. And I honestly don't see this big sell-off as justified. It may be an entry point for me 
Um, I've been buying a lot of Paycom recently. You guys are going to see in my uh, portfolio update coming in just a couple days what I've been doing with my portfolio. But I've been buying a lot of Paycom. Um, but but this is certainly another interesting one, me as a young investor wanting to invest in. I mean, over th this company's finances have improved immensely. And going back to levels we haven't seen since 2023 in terms of financials and the management showing a lot better constraint for acquisitions and for stock-based compensation and for efficiency, I really do think this is an opportunity to buy the business. And they just started paying a dividend as well. So that's nice as well. If we take a look at the company on a valuation standpoint, the company is so much cheaper than where it usually trades at. I mean, a PE of 33, you could say is high, but compared to where it usually trades at of a PE of 46, it's 28% cheaper. And on a forward price to earnings basis, even cheaper, 27.5 compared to an average of 46, about 40% cheaper on a price to earnings basis. And on a price to cash flow basis, uh, it's 25.5 on a trailing 12 month compared to 34, so 25% cheaper than where it usually trades at on a forward price to cash flow 21 compared to 33, so 35% cheaper than where it usually trades at. And like I said, just instituting that dividend. So this company is, is really doing really well. And this is one that also I kind of highlight as well has um has outperformed the S&P 500. If we go here to total return, and we show you guys the total return over the past five years, Salesforce actually has slightly underperformed, but over the past 10 years, Salesforce has largely outperformed the S&P 500. And I think over the past five years, the company's financials have improved at a faster rate than the S&P 500. And I think this company will continue to outperform. We could see that they were just outperforming a couple months ago. And I think over the next five years, this company will outperform the S&P 500 while growing dividends. So that does meet my criteria as an investor. So I'm going to let you guys know. Join my Discord. You get to see my active trades when I buy and sell in different things. It's been improving or X or Blossom or any of those things. Uh, you guys could see what I'm going to do. And I think I will buy Salesforce. And one thing that I do want to mention is thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. I did express my gratitude and I appreciate every single one of you so much. But that'll be the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great one.